Hi guys, I've had another wee go at this and hopefully you'll be able to see things have tidied up a little bit on the uh, the crank. Um, this is the freewheel crank that I've been using and I've managed to get a smaller uh, chain ring. It's a 30 tooth chain ring, you can just see it in the back there. Uh, as you can see, it's a good bit smaller than the one I was using, which was a 38 tooth, I think. I think that's, that's 38 tooth. The one in the back there, I think, is a 30 tooth. So I managed to get it fitted on the back. I then managed to cut out the center part of the, um, the scooter, motor scooter sprocket, um, which this was the old one I was using. As you can see, I had welded those big nuts on there, added lots of weight, and so on. So Getting rid of that was no bad thing. This one, I'm using proper um, chain ring bolts to hold the whole thing together. These 30 tooth chain rings come with uh, threaded holes on the other side, so you just use your, your bolts to go right through. So those are, I think, 16 millimeter um, chain, chain ring bolts. Something like that, or 16 or 18 millimeters, something like that. They're longer than standard anyway, uh, which they need to be to go right through the whole thing. And as you can see, there's plenty of room there for the, let's see if I can get you in there, plenty of room for the two chains to go side by side. So, uh, with this setup, I'm getting a slightly better um, first gear. It's obviously not a massive difference. The bigger difference will come when I put the 50 to sprocket on the back there on the um on this so there's going to be 50 48 42 blah blah and right down to i'm not sure what the smallest one's going to be but it'll not really matter i'll have to take that all apart to do that so hopefully that'll work out well um still need to sort out some sort of a tensioner on this um it does flop around the breeze a fair bit at the minute um just with things moving and, and whatever, with, it's, it's sort of inevitable when you uh, do a job like this. So that's still have to do that. Um, tidy up a few other things. I've got new batteries coming to increase the battery capacity. Um, this is a five, five batteries in parallel, 10 in series. So it's a 36 volt nominal, 42 volt max. Um, battery pack um, with five and five batteries in parallel. Uh, I'm going to bring that up to at least seven and maybe eight batteries in parallel. Keep it at 36 volts and then we'll see how it goes from there uh, just to get the extra power. Um, the voltage sag is quite significant with the, uh, the heavy, it's a 1500 watt controller up here. Uh, I think I showed you that before. This is a 1500 watt controller. And so it's, it's quite a, a drain on the batteries. With a 250 or a 500 watt motor, that pack would be fine, but not with this. Anyway, that's that's for another video. And that wraps me up. At the moment, it's still, still working. Um, uh, I might just go with I was thinking maybe of just putting four or six batteries down here to replace this. These are old laptop batteries, so they won't last very long and you can't get much power out of them and there's lots of them, so they're quite heavy. So if I could go with just either four or six standard uh, lithium ion batteries, that should be enough to give me the voltage I need to excite the coils and give me the magnetism in the motor. That's the plan anyway. Um, I might go with a, a buck converter, but we'll see. I'm not convinced. I'm struggling to find a buck converter which is um, suitable for the job. I've got one that will do it. I'll show you this. This is a buck converter I've got that would do the job. It's a 60 volt. Um, up to 60 volts, something like 30, 40 amps buck converter. So well overkill for this job. Uh, but, and it's far too heavy. I think three or four batteries would probably be lighter. Anyway, 
we'll see how it goes. Right guys, last time I was on, I was um, uh, talking about how slack the chain was and how I wanted to make some sort of a bracket to tighten it. And as you can see, I've done that. I just took a little bit of aluminium or aluminum if you happen to be in America. Um, Cut it to the size of the bottom bracket there, and this is a piece of I think it's nylon. I'm not sure, some sort of plastic anyway. But as you can see, it moves. It's held on with this little spring, and just one uh, bolt is holding it on there. So that if I start to pedal, you can see it's a lovely and smooth. No noise. Very little noise anyway, and no issues with that. So hopefully that will be that resolved. Um, I may have to return to that at some stage, but uh, for now that's looking good. <laughs> 